Welcome, GMB pros. Welcome, family. Those that are on the live, those that are on the replay, I appreciate you guys, uh, your support. Yeah, appreciate you guys being here today. Much love and success to everyone here. Today, I invited my friend, um, even if he doesn't consider me his friend, I consider him my friend. Oh, <laughs> So the, uh, me and Patrick, I don't know what, going on a couple months or so? Yeah, a couple months, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, a couple of months. Me and Patrick embarked, uh, or oh, I should say, I embarked, I crossed paths with um, with Patrick on this sales journey, the sales framework. He has done it for a little bit, not that long. Uh, what, 20 years, Patrick? Yeah, 20 years, just 20 years, yeah. That's Tw it. 20 years and it's he true. has uh, a lot of yeah a lot of success a lot of of value and turning in turning this concept of sales turning in this concept of like ah what do I do these fears these emotions like and making them super simple giving you a framework and the best way I can describe it guys is I don't know if you guys have been bowling right you go to a bowling and you want to like put all the odds for you right you put the bumpers up up. you have the guide slide thing for the ball and it's just going to go down it, it'll go right it'll go left but it'll keep moving you forward and definitely get you on track with the ultimate goal of helping as many people as you can and patrick has this way this framework that i love we connected and i'm using and it's definitely helped me at the very least get more conversations right Get me more conversations and no matter where you're at in your sales process to be able to just drop in there, right? Be able to just drop in there no matter where you're at. And especially right now, you know, and I asked Patrick, hey, Patrick, come join us. He's like, perfect. I love it. I would love to share this with you guys. He has a super big heart and willing to give and, and guide. So uh -huh. with that being said, Patrick, my man, if you can give me a little bit more history, I know you have this huge history with, you know, with sales and training um, and, you know, life experience. Um, and he was making me jealous. He's over in Denver showing me those snow white field mountains to go yeah. snowboarding in, you know. So love it. Love it. So, Patrick, give us a little bit more background uh, sure. on yourself and, and how we came yeah, yeah, you know me. All right. So, hi, everybody. My name is Patrick Geary. Uh, I've been a sales coach, sales trainer since 2000. So, uh, that's a little bit of time. I worked for the largest sales training company in the world. And I learned from a guy he's passed on now. His name was Gary. And he was my mentor. And, and what I learned how to do is I learned how to sell counterintuitive of what we've been taught. And um, so I've got some experience and what I've been able to do throughout the years is take some of these complexities and simplify them and simplify it so that you guys can be, oh, I can do this and try to get some of the vagueness out of it and create more clarity with it there. So one of my clients I work with that um, uh, Alfredo is connected with. So he's, he's, I do some training with him on the weekend, but I, I mean, on this one time slot, so we work with it there. So um, what I want to do today is see if I can support you guys. I'm not here to sell you anything. If you want to talk later, if I can help with you, great. If not, whatever. I just want to help you guys, whatever I can do to serve you with when it comes to selling. But I want to take you through kind of a, a little bit of a framework and kind of go from there. So before I get started, I want to just see who's all in the room. Oh, good. If everybody turned their camera, that would be awesome. So I can see people's faces. I guess I've been training and coaching for a little bit, so, and I get a little get going there. So, Richard, what would be your, if we go real quick, what would be the rig biggest roadblock or barrier you're facing right now when it comes to selling? Um, so I actually haven't, I actually haven't um, done any, any selling okay. or approached any clients, but I guess my biggest in my mind would be like how to kind of start the conversation to yeah. keep it to keep it going past the, you know the two minute mark to where they're like you know telling me to drop dead and right and hey not no, call again perfect. perfect start conversation awesome how about with you Jeff what would be one of your biggest roadblocks and barrier when it comes to selling 
Can everybody see my board okay? Perfect. You're muted, Jeff. I am. There you yeah. go. Um, no roadblocks here, guys. I've been doing marketing for 50 years, and like you, Patrick, I go back a long, long way for the best. The best ever for me was Tom Hopkins. Yeah. Um, um, he, he was he was the master. And the best book I ever read, and it's a great book, guys. If you haven't got it, get it. It's called, and Patrick will know this one, Shut Up and Sell. Okay. It's a great book. You ask okay. a question, then you shut up. Okay. Yeah. So that sounds interesting. Okay, good. How about with you, Carlos? What's a roadblock or barrier with you that you might be facing with selling? Excuse me. Uh, the one thing that I do have is just I don't outreach. It's all inbound. I explain what I'm going to do and if they want okay. it. Not the, the only thing that I do not do is follow up. I don't ever follow up. If they want to contact what? me. I'm sorry. I don't follow up. If they want to contact me again. Oh, you don't follow up. Got it. Yep. No, I don't. You don't. Okay. So you're like, hey, that's it. I have I don't want to waste my time and chase people down. Appreciate it. that's good good skill. Hey, Miss Brandy Nair, I know you. What's one of your biggest roadblock and barriers that you might be facing with selling? So mine is again, I know Alfredo and Patrick, you've heard this before, but really just being um, you know, getting to the point. And not, and not getting attached to the actual person and just being, you know, listening to their problem and, you know, attaching pain to it. I'm not good at that. Okay. Good, good, good. Anybody else want to share the, the have our cameras turned off? Elder or Mike or Alfredo, anybody else before I get started? Sure. Uh -huh. My options. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, mine is actually uh, the patience. Sometimes I just patience. Patience, uh, yeah, because it requires a lot of patience. And if you it really it, does it's, it's, having it's patience itself. with the prospect, got yeah. it. Good, 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 good. How about you, Mike? Anything else? The initial contact and getting to speak to the right person. <laughs> I, I could initial contact, right decision maker. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So we're going to cover all these and we're going to cover all these and a lot more for you guys here. Okay. But before I get into, into um, selling, before I get to everything presented here with everybody, I want to make sure, can we like set some ground rules for today's topic or whatever? Is that okay? First one is, let's make this interactive. So I'm going to, like, I already jumped in there without asking you guys permission. So I'm going to ask you a question. Feed, give me some feedback. Go from there. Is everybody good with that? Number two, some questions. And what I mean by questions is, is like, challenge me what I've talked about a little bit there. So just tell me what's going on and, and I'll throw it out there. And then number three, just open your mind. And what I mean by opening your mind is like literally ask yourself, hey, maybe I can see this from a different perspective and kind of go from there. Is that good? And then number four, if you want to talk further with me, um, I'll give you, I'll give, uh, you could just say yes or no and and we'll get some contact and do a phone call. I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm just going to like find out more about you if I can serve you or not. Is that okay? So everybody can hear me? Good. All right. So here we go. So... And, and bear with me. This is one of my new things I bought. It's a digital whiteboard. I probably know 5% how to use it there. So, but it, it, it looks like we're virtual trainings going. So we went ahead and got one and worked with it right there. So we're going to start off real quick and we're going to play a, um, a game. Who wants to play a game? Right? Good. Everybody likes games. All right. I want you to go ahead and un unmute yourself right now. I want you to go ahead and describe yourself. I'm going to call on you guys. I want you to go ahead and describe yourself to me, but you cannot say these three words. Are you ready? I, me, or we. Go ahead. I want you to describe yourself without using the three words. I or all or anything like that. I, me, or we. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'll go. I'll go. 
Although English, I'll go. I'll I gotta, go. I gotta, you I gotta can. think about this for a second. Uh, so let's uh, let's uh, talk as for local with so for the agency stuff. Okay. Um, what the agency does, the agency helps small to large businesses to get more clients on Google by optimizing different components of their business. Okay, good, good. That was pretty good. Anybody else want to give it a shot? It's hard, isn't it? Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> People say that Jeff Veal is the Tom Brady of marketing. Or oh, yeah. if they're in the if they're in the UK, it's the Gordon Ramsay of marketing with the same potty mouth. Nice. <laughs> Good, job. Good job. All right. So we got a couple. Congratulations. So you did a nice third party approach right there, Jeff. Excellent approach. Good job, um, Eldar. So why is it so difficult to have a conversation without bringing up ourselves. It's because most salespeople are always I focus, focusing on themselves. What's in it for me? How can I help you? This is what I do. This is how great I am. This is how wonderful our product is. This is how wonderful our service is. This is why you need to work with us because we are so good at what we do, right? And how many of you guys have heard salespeople act that way before when you when they've been trying to sell you something? Right. And what happens to the walls? It goes up, up, up. And all of a sudden they're like, wait a second. I think this person is trying to sell me and they're trying to sell me. I need to protect myself so that I don't buy something that may not actually get any value or may not work in my life. Right. So we're going to play one more game for a second here. So we're going to get rid of this right here. And then the next game we're going to play, we're going to play a game called Password. I'm going to give you a word. And I want you to describe me what this word would mean if, here it is, if you are the general public. Are you ready? The general public and the per and the perception of what they think this word is. Are you ready? Here it is. Salesperson. What does a general, <laughs> go ahead. Let's get the general <laughs> public. What are the words that the general public thinks of? The salesperson, salesman, Sleaze. huh? Sleazy. Sleazy. Yay. <laughs> what else? Liar. 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 Okay. <laughs> Got two positives right out of the gate. What else? It was just a gimmick. It's a gimmick. I mean, a I don't... gimmick. Uh huh. Uh huh. Gimmick. What else? Right. Hard closer and hard. hard hard closer, right? Hard closer. Uh money, right? Ca used car sales person, right? Used car sales. Blah blah blah. So is it fair to say you guys didn't get together beforehand? Is it fair to say that sell the sell the word salesperson has a negative perception to the general public or positive? Negative, negative correct? Right. And, and I'm going to go a little bit deeper and I'm going to show you why that happens. And once you understand this, you'll be like, oh, okay. This is why we don't want to sell because we don't want to have that negative perception of, of being the traditional salesperson there. Okay. So what we're going to do here huh? is we're going to create some systems here. The first one is going to be a traditional salesperson. And then this is what we call the prospect Sell, sell the prospect system. So if I'm in a sales call and I'm a traditional salesperson, what's the first thing I'm taught to do in basic sales training 101? Anybody give it a shot. I meet with the prospect. I want to sit down with them. What's, what's the first thing I do? Establish rapport. Ah, so good. Bonding and rapport. Absolutely. And then what does the, what does the prospect do too? They're supposed to do some bonding rapport with you as well. Everybody's got that, right? A little bonding rapport. Hey, Mr. Prospect, how you doing? What, what was taught traditional selling is common point of reference. Hey, you're from Steamboat. I'm from Steamboat. We must have something in common. Dot, 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 dot. You, you're from Denver. I'm from Denver. You must like the Broncos. I like the Broncos. Dot, 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 dot. Kind of fair, right? Good. I established a little rapport. 
After step number one, let the games begin, my friends. Let the games begin. Step number two is, what do I do if I'm a, a salesperson? If I'm like semi-trained at some level, what do I do? Jeff even said it earlier. Uh, warm them up. Questions. Warm them up. Oh, my God. This is good. Warm them up. So what? how do I warm them up? Or how do I, if I want to find out, I'm going to ask them some what? Questions. The questions. Yes. I'm going to ask them some questions. And guess what? Guess what? If they're not in the mood to buy at that point, right then and there, prospects, believe it or not, will mislead or start to lie to salespeople. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You'll start asking them questions and they'll be like, yeah, I'm so interested. Tell me more what you're going to do. And da, 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 da. Yes, yes, yes. Has that ever happened to you guys before? It has. And have you ever lied to a salesperson? <laughs> Absolutely. There's a Bible verse. I've st I've got to find it in the Bible. I said all the time in my trainings, it's okay to lie to a salesperson and still get to heaven. Because they're salespeople. <laughs> they're not actually humans, guys. So after I start asking questions and I start going there, I'm the traditional salesperson. What's step number three? Anybody? I've gathered the information. I've got all the information. Where do I usually want to go? With me, I feed benefits. Go ahead. I feed back what, what they've told me. I feed it back to them. Okay, you got the question. Go there. You put it all together. Now I've got to go into a... Close. Close. Or how about a presentation stage? No. How about I put together a, a proposal? I put together a, a slide deck. I put together like here's how we're gonna fix everything. Is is that fair to say? Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna mm -hmm. go into what we call present presentation mode. And as I start to do presentation, what am I taught to do? I'm taught to teach you features. This is the features, and these are the benefits. This is why you need this. And here's the benefits of how it's going to change your life. It does this, but then because it does that, dot, 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 dot. You guys have seen people do this before? Okay, perfect. So then I go into step three right here. And what the prospect does is they like to steal our information. Mm -hmm. And we do a thing, this thing called unpaid consulting. We give away all of our stuff for free, absolutely no charge or expertise of how we're going to solve the problem, why it works, everything else. Da, 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 And here you go. And then step number four, after I give you my present. What's that? And then once I, do... once I go to step number four, I've done the presentation. What am I trained to do? Come on, guys. Go for the A kill. Oh. The what? Go for the kill. Go for the kill or go for the close. Uh huh. Uh huh. And at this process, prospects said, "Hey, that sounds really good, but let me tell you what. Let me think it over. Let me get back with you. I need to talk to my wife." I tell you what, I got a couple of business partners. I'm going to go ahead and give it to them next week, and we'll get back with you if we want to we'll want to work with you or not. And then Carlos is like, you know what? So that what they do again is they're like, hey, they mislead <laughs> and lie to us again. They don't do it purposely. They're just protecting themselves. And then number five is they say, call me on Tuesday. I'm gonna I'll give it my partner. Let me know. I'll let you know on Tuesday. So Tuesday comes at 10 o'clock and you call. And what do you get? Voicemail. Crickets. Voice crickets. And then Wednesday comes. Crickets. 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 And you unfortunately start moving into chase mode. And if they don't want to work with you, they go into hide mode. You do get something though. You do get something. This goes, this, my partner said this many years ago, rest, wherever you're at, John, he passed away many years ago, colon cancer. 
We, we'll take this one. You do get this one. You get lifetime subscription to voicemail. Uh-huh. You get unlimited voicemails. And it sounds like, hey, John, I'm just following up with you. Hope that you're going to work with me. Blah. Hey, da, 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 da. And if they don't want to work with you, what happens? They, you go away and you go on the next prospecting call. And you're just like, oh, frustrated. Have you done this to salespeople? You sure have. You got their stuff, you got their price, you got their solution, and boom, they were gone. Done. Yeah. So what we call this right over here, my friends, is the buyer-seller's dance. Who's in control? The prospect or the salesperson? Prospect. 100%. And here's the challenge. It works. Here's the challenge. You close business this way. Here's the challenge. It actually works. And if it works, people keep doing it. So I'm going to show you a different approach. I'm going to show you a different way. Will it work for everybody? Absolutely not. But I'm going to give you some clarity on helping you guys see it from a completely different perspective. Is that okay? And then we can open up and have some more discussions and kind of go from there. Good? So... Okay, and I'm going to step over here so you guys can see me okay. Can you see the board okay? Yes. Everybody good? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Yep. So this is called the scale system, okay? Something that I developed based on the six principles of influence, social behavior, why people do. Step number one is similar bonding okay people buy write this down people buy from people that are like themselves that understand that are speaking their same language so for example there's a thing called neurolinguistic programming and what they decided oh i back in the 70s they created a um they created a study of 16,000 people and they realized that people fall into three categories, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic and communication. We were just talking about this today. 55% is done by physiology. 38% is done on uh, tonality or pitch and 7% is done on words. Okay. So go ahead and put your hand out like this really quick. Like, so you can hold out your hand. Everybody have their hand out there. Okay. I'll put this one. This will work. Okay, ready? Go ahead and see if you can go faster than I can. Ready? One, two, three. Go ahead and put this on your chin. Chin! Chin! We match your mirror. One person switched it overall, right? What we're constantly doing and similar bonding rapport with your prospect. If you're pro if you do if you meet with people virtually, do a Zoom call. The way that you get bonding and rapport, write this down, is by matching and mirroring their body language. If they're talking fast in the beginning, I want to talk fast. If they're talking slower, I want to talk slower. If they're talking really slow, then I want to talk really slow too. Because who are people spend the most time with is themselves. And when I'm speaking their language, their walls are going to come down and that's who they trust the most. So that's step number one. That's a huge complex. That's a so similar bonding, people from buy from people that they respect and they trust, number one. Okay, number two. So far good? Is everybody good? All right, number two. When I meet with the prospect, we have to establish what we call clear agreements. Clear agreements of what's going to be covered in the sales call. For example, the time frame, the decision makers, are they available? Are they available for, we call that, okay, clear agreements, clear agreements of what's going to be said. What? Tell me your clear agreements there for a second, Jeff. Break it down for me. Um, I was writing something, sorry. You want the clear agreement on what I tell the Yeah, client? when you, when you, you called it hatch or something else, but tell me more, what do you mean by... What what are the what are the key elements that must be done in a sales call? Um, well, I, I going back to what you were talking about a few moments ago, 
in Australia, we call that match the hatch, for example. Match the hatch. That is yeah. a great term. I've never heard that. Match yeah, the we, hatch. And Tell I'll, me more. I'll give, I'll give you guys a, a bit about that. For example, if you were going fishing and you, you would not use a six-inch hook to try and catch a sardine because right. um, he can't get his mouth on it. You know, you're not going to catch any sardines. And the same as you wouldn't use a um, a very, very small hook if you wanted to catch a shark or a half-decent fish. You know, the bigger the bait, the bigger the fish. Absolutely. Yeah? So, Matt, so meet them where they're at. If they're a, yeah, match, a fast match the animated speaker, match the hatch. Yeah. I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to borrow yeah. that sometime. I used to work. Guys, I was a matchmaker for 20 years, which turned me into an amateur psychologist because <laughs> I spoke to eight clients a day, belly to belly, from doctors down to um, uh, Harley, Harley Davidson guys, whatever. And right. They, they drove a Harley Davidson and came in with their leathers or their tats, whatever. I'd sl I'd slouch back in my chair the way they did and match the hatch. If they were a doctor, I would sit up exactly dead straight with my tie straight, looking like looking trying to look as professional as what they were. Yeah. And their so walls cool. their walls eventually come down, down, Correct. down, Correct. down, down. Yeah. And, and then, and then go ahead. Yeah, then then comes the cup of then I'd ask for permission. I, I used to do a lot of permission stuff like, would it be okay if I got you a coffee? You know, would it be okay if we if we'd be uh, step by step, would it more or less, I'd change the wording a bit, but basically would it be okay? Yeah. Get, I'm permission based. Uh, that's something I just I cover that all the time. Good good job, man. That's amazing. We got to absolutely so good. So similar bonding is what he's so next time you go out to a restaurant and you notice two people engaged on step number one, what they'll do is their body language will be completely like lined up with each other. So their arms will be a certain way, their head will be nodding, and they'll just be, and that's how really rapport is. And so my job is as, as a professional salesperson is, is to match their body language. 55% of it's all going to be physiology, 38% is going to be tonality, only 7% actually influences people. Hmm, very interesting, right? So once I start bonding rapport, I want to bring the walls down. Number two is I want to create what we call clear agreements. And on clear agreements, I want to establish the ground rules of what the meeting is going to be covered. You may want to write this down. The first one I want to set up is the time frame of how long the meeting is going to be. Five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. That's crucial. Hey, let's just get together and talk for 10 minutes. So think about this logically. My solution is going to, their investment's going to, let's say it's $10,000, and I want to have a 10-minute conversation with them. Can you really get to a 10-minute conversation? Can you really propose somebody to write a check for $10,000 in 10 minutes? If you can, come on out to Steamboat and teach me that. I don't think it's going to happen, right? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, right? Because money has emotion attached to it. So I always want to honor their time. Also, I always want to honor their decision makers. I want to understand what the agenda is, what we're going to get clear. But what's most important on the clear agreements, this is number one. If you get anything out of today, take this out right here. What salespeople don't do what salespeople don't do, what they must need to do is they need to get a decision, either a yes, a no, or a, a second meeting, a clear and distinct future to where you can get a yes and no up front. Let me explain that to you again. It's called going for the no. Would you like an example of that? Anybody? Sure. Here it is. Hey, thank you so much today, Jeff, for meeting with me. I really appreciate it. I understand from us talking on the phone, you're the only decision maker that needs to be involved if we were to work together. Is that correct? Yes. 100%. 100%. Let's pretend we're at the end of today's meeting. What is it you want to get out of today's meeting, make it successful for you? What is it you need to see, hear, feel, or for, feel for me to make today a successful meeting? And he tells me dot, 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 dot. By the way, before we get started, to save your time and my time, if I'm not a good fit for you, I want you to feel comfortable right away 
tell me, no, I'm not a good fit for you. Or I may have to tell you no as well. The reason why is that I don't work with everybody. Or if it does make sense for us to work together, we'll figure out what that is together. If it does make sense for us to work together, we will figure out what that looks like together. Or we may run out of time and have to schedule another meeting. Are you okay with that before we get started today? When I establish the clear agreements up front, most important thing, what I'm actually doing is giving everybody clarity. But even more important than that, what I'm doing is I am helping them have a framework and we're, we're both speaking the same language. But what if you schedule a meeting and then on the phone they say, yeah, I got an hour and you show up and they say, hey, Patrick, I got 10 minutes. What do you got? What do I do? I say, guess what? I'm going to have to reschedule. I'm going to have to reschedule or I can get started in 15 minutes and we can decide where we go after that. But it's a hard no at that time. All I've scheduled for is one hour. I do not compromise my time when I'm on a sales call. What if you're still going on and it's past the hour meeting? <laughs> what do you do? You say, guess what? It's we're at the hour. We've agreed to one hour today to meet. What would you like to do? What is your schedule like? Would you like to stop to reschedule? I'm okay with another, I have another 30 minutes of my schedule to continue or whatever you feel is most comfortable, but I got to honor their time up front. Go ahead, Jeff. I've got a question for you, Patrick. I've got my own theories, guys. You guys can listen to this one. What do you do if they show up on either a mobile phone or, or worse, they're, dr they're driving the car. They want to have this meeting and they're driving the car. What do you guys, how do you handle Perfect. that? Perfect. Would you, would, would you like to know a solution for that? Yes, I got my own, but what's yours? Uh, uh, let me hear yours, and I'll see if we're on the same page. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Huh? You don't value my bye -bye. You don't value my time. But in no, a nice, I, no, 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 I'm no. only kidding. I'm kidding. Now, what no, I no, do, I, re, I reschedule them because what I'm going to tell you today, Patrick, is very, very important, and I need you to have a pad and paper because if you're anything like me, you're going to forget half of what we're speaking about. That, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Anybody else have a solution for that? If you've agreed to meet on the call and they're driving, they just want you to get, get to the point. What do you have? Blah, blah, blah. Alfredo, you've got something. Come on, let it out. Come on, don't keep all your secrets there. No, I'm going to give it to you right now. Uh, Alfredo is like a, <laughs> uh, a quite a tumor. Okay, it is called, <laughs> write this down, guys. This is not what I planned for today, but this is called falling on the sword. Okay, falling <laughs> like on the it. sword is take ownership. So I you like set it. the meeting. Here's what happens. You're, you're testing their integrity. You set the meeting that you're going to have an interactive meeting on Zoom. They broke the contract. They broke the agreement. They're driving on the phone. They want to meet with you. So you got to like, you, you have to like let them know, but you have to own it yourself. So I would say something like this. I would say, Jeff, I owe you a huge, huge apology. I did not make it clear when we set this meeting up that we needed to be face to face and make this interactive where you're going to have to take notes and I'm going to take notes and we're going to have to really dig deeper down. I owe you a huge apology. I didn't set that up when we set up the meeting. And right there, he's going to say, no, you did. It's on me. And once he takes ownership, so so typically when this happens, what's could I make a suggestion? Sure. When this happens, typically what we'll do is reschedule where we can get face to face and revisit everything together. There's no way we can get everything. And so I'm still making feel okay, but I'm also holding them accountable because I'm falling. I owe you a huge apology. It's my fault. I forgot to tell you that we need to be face to face to work through it all. And he says, No, no, it was on me. And now he owns it. You think your traditional salesperson does that? Nope. Okay. So that's what I would do. So like clear it. agreements. Okay. So that's it. Number number two. Number three. Addressing issues. Okay. There is a reason. Write this down. There is a reason, one, two, three, maybe four reasons at max that they want to meet with you. They've got a problem. They've got a concern. They've got a they've got something going on inside their life 
that they need help with you to meet with you. People do not schedule meetings with people unless there's some pain to be resolved. I was sharing, I just, I bought a car. Uh, well, I told the story like three weeks ago. I live up in the mountains. It's coming back. I flipped my car. <laughs> so it's time to get a new car. I live in <laughs> Steamboat, which is three hours from Denver. So on my window, I had to take a bus from Steamboat to Denver. Couldn't rent a car because I needed to get the car back there. And then from down, take the, the, like the, sit the, whatever regional bus four hour ride it's normally a two and a half hour ride it was nice then i had to get a rental car so i had a short window short window to go buy a car i i needed to get the car to get back to steamboat that was my time frame i was in pain the first <laughs> car i went to get ah, the, the sales guy almost he frustrated him ah i just and then you know what the sales guy came over to me the manager he, he nurtured me back into him he said yeah leave it yeah, he's like, and he gave me the list of cars to look at. I found that, oh, how can I take that one? I'm signing for a car before I leave, right? Because I'm in pain. There's a reason why they want to meet with you. But what they do is they guard it. They hide it because if they tell you what the real reason is, you're going to try to sell them on the features and benefits of how smart you are. And this is where most salespeople fail, okay? So check this out. I find out what the real issues are. It's going to be present. So it's going to be either a present issue that they're going through, a past issue, or it's going to be a future issue that they're going to be having to address. That's it. So my step number four is I need to link the emotion I need to link the emotion to the issue. I need to find out what the pain is, how it's impacting them. What is it holding them not to be able to do? What is it stopping them? How is it causing them not to be able to get what they want? How is it stopping them? What is it costing them? Why, why are they like frustrated? What are they feeling about it at night? Because you know whose problem it is? Theirs. Not mine. I have enough problems of my own, just like you guys have your problems. And then I go to step number five, which is my expert solution. This is the basic framework, but inside of there, we'll talk about budget, decision-making, all the other things inside there too. But right here, the expert solution <laughs> is I only give them problems I only give them solutions that solve their pain and, and to move them into their future. That's it. It's like going to the doctor. You don't care how much it costs if, if, if you have to have surgery. You don't care anymore because you're in pain. And if I find an 8, 9, 10, they're going to work with me. If I have a 1, 2, 3, the chances are they're not. If it's a 4, 5, 6, 7, it's even more difficult. And this is where I do my close. So questions. That's it. There's way more, but this is simplified. Love it. No, yes, maybe. So one thing that I, yeah, yeah. What one thing that I wanted to point out is, and Patrick skipped over it a little bit, but guys, when it when when people like trust, you know, pe people they buy people that buy either like you, trust you, believe in you, and in this pain section, the higher the pain that you get out of somebody, the higher the trust. 100%. So, so in this- they don't, tell you, they don't tell you their pain. You don't, they hey, guess what? I'm in pain. My credit cards are maxed out. I don't have my 401k anymore. I put it all in my business. My wife's about ready to leave me. I've mortgaged my house. I had a, my employees. I can't make payroll, whatever that pain. They're not going to tell you that. Because if I'm, because everybody has what we call the looking good program. I want to look good. <laughs> I want to have it all together, but I'm dying inside. And in this process, they're discovering that they want to work with you rather than you trying to convince them. They're grown adults. 
And here's the problem. We don't know when they decide in their mind that they want to work with you. Maybe it was in the bonding stage. Maybe it was in the clear agreement stage. Maybe it was, but you have a system that's, you're not chasing them. You're not giving up control. If you told them the number one thing, tell me, no, I won't take it personally. You can't shop me around. I don't do that. Can I have your stuff and get back with me? I don't do that. What I could do is I could do what's called a working agreement. I can put my presentation at the end of you can see it. You can let me know if you want to work with me or not, but I don't give out my intellectual property for you to shop it around. Doctors don't shop around their stuff. Attorneys don't shop around their stuff. But salespeople think they need to shop their get their stuff shopped around. Designers, architects, they don't shop their stuff around. You pay for that expertise. But we want to give it for free. Because if we show them how smart we are, they'll work with us. And they have four other guys. And what does it always come down to right here? It comes down to price. And they don't want, and you tell them up front, hey, by the way, I got to let you know, I'm probably, even if I, you know, I I've, I know you, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of market coming to the world. Before we even get started, I'm expensive. I'm expensive. Should we keep talking? <laughs> Should we keep, I'm expensive. <laughs> Should we keep <laughs> talking? <laughs> And they're going to say, yeah, they're going to, do you know the reason why we're, do you know the reason why I'm expensive at what I do? Do, do you, you know the results. reason why? Why? Huh? You get, re Take you get results. I get results. That's exactly right. And do you know another reason? You get, get results? I get results. Yeah. I get transformation. <laughs> Whatever they say, you go back with them. You know the number one reason why people want to work with, with Jeff, the business guru? Why, why is the number one reason what Carlos is the number one reason why Jeff, the business guru, that people want to work with him? Take a guess. Oh, you're asking me? Yeah. What's the number one reason why Jeff they want to work with Jeff, the business guru? He, he's got all his sales processes gone, going, and he, he knows stuff. Because he and, knows his stuff. That's exactly right. And see, I well, what you just said, I I was a victim to that when I first started. Uh, I would create, but under my site, a demo for their site, the way it's going to look, how it's going to impact them and help them. But that was that. When they didn't contact me back, I didn't follow up. I'm, I wouldn't care. Right, because here's why. Here's why. You ready? Because they were, thank you. I owe you an apology. I forgot this key point. Write this down. Remember, if you get anything out of today's training, I don't know if you guys learned anything yet so far. If you got anything out of this, this, write this down. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay? People buy emotionally. They justify it intellectually. Let me repeat that. People buy emotionally, they justify it intellectually. What was the last thing you purchased? Anybody? I Myself, bought I bought local lists. Oh, you bought some lists, okay? No, 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 no. No, not lists. Local with by uh Cohen. I thought he was here, but I guess he left. No, Elder. Yes. He's here. Oh, he is or he Real That's quick, the last, the last thing you purchased, I purchased gas, okay? I bought software. Software, okay? Last thing, small, big, doesn't matter. What was the last thing you bought, Alfredo? Yes. Carlos, last thing you bought? A Bud Light. A Bud Light! 100% <laughs> intellectual! 100% intellectual! Thank you. If he wanted a Bud Light and it wasn't, it, a Bud Light was like four bucks, but hey, man, it's $2. I can get three. Well, it's a people buy emotionally, just buy intellectually. But what we do traditionally is we sell intellectually, hoping to get them emotional. Because we tell them how smart we are. <laughs> hmm. 
If you're telling you ain't selling, my friends, the amateur salesperson's talking 70, 80% of the time. The professional is, is listening 70, 80% of the time. Hmm. What do you do? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Zip. Our job as professional salespeople is to gather, not dispense information. Because once I give you all my stuff, once I give you my solution, without you're not being emotionally connected, you shop me around, you think it over, you get back with me, and I fall in the category right over here, and I lose all control. Good? Any takeaways from 100%. that? Probably nothing. What's a takeaway, Jeff, you got? Give them the spices and sell them the recipe. Give them the spices and sell them the recipe and mesh, hash the mesh. Or what was it again? I'm sorry. Match the hatch. Match the hatch. Perfect. Carlos, what was your takeaway today? Well, um, what I'm seeing right now is uh, clarify everything in the meeting and see if they're a match for you or not. Yes. Way, yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't have to follow up. I mean, I never do. But uh, but you should. I should. You follow uh, up till they they follow up till they buy or die. No, I, I've heard that do. before, but I don't do that. I don't do that. That's old I school. Let, stuff. I, let, I let the system come on, guys. I've got VAs. I let the system do it. I don't need to do anything. The system does it, and they come back sometimes one and two years later. But I don't care. If they don't come back. You know? Right, but that but that's the mindset of the traditional salesperson. So that's old school. Follow up, follow up, follow up, chase, 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 and if they hide, they hide. Whereas my mind, this is what happens. My mind gets focused in on these, fill up this pipeline, and no matter what, you gave me time, I'm just going to show you what a great follow-up I am. The problem isn't, in, isn't on the number of prospects that you're following up, but the problem is I don't go deep enough with them emotionally. The problem is I don't ask them the tough questions. The problem is I get scared because I have a need for approval. I want them to like me. And my mom told me to be a likable kid. The problem is I answer questions when they ask me questions. The problem is I need the business, but I, I don't want the business. The problem is I look desperate. And when you look all those things come on a sales call, you come across needy, they will own you. But when you, when you walk away from a prospect and you tell them we're not a good fit and I'm going to close the meeting, I'm going to like go ahead and like walk away, then they come from you. And you close – and what you do, you can do what's called a close the file technique. Hey, you said you were going to talk. You changed your mind. I'm going to close the file. Done. And people will come back to you that way. Then when you close the file, you move on. The difference oh, is <laughs> the old school way works. What I'm telling you is – I want their business. I don't need their business. The number of prospects that are out there is mind-boggling. But the problem is we get attached to that list and we just keep going. That's the truth. Been doing it for a little bit of time. And it's never, there's two things in sales. I'm going to wrap with this. Technical. Can everybody see that? Yep. Okay. Technical is techniques. Right? Tactics. Closes. Whatever. All those little, like, th these are all hows. Right? How, how to do that. How to do that. That's how to do it. Okay. <laughs> this is where we screw up. It's never the technical problem that stops us from becoming successful. It's always the conceptual. This is your outlook. This is your inner inner self. This is how you this is your positivity or your negativity. This is how, this is why you're doing what you're doing. 
And most sales training, my friends, focus in on this one right over here. I'm going to give you the, the golden nuggets. Just say this. Just say this. It's easy for you. It's not easy for me because my mom told me to be quiet. Don't ask so many questions. Keep your mouth shut because my childhood conditioning. Shh. You know? But salespeople need to ask questions. Salespeople need to rock the boat. Salespeople need to get people uncomfortable to make a decision. It's never technical. It's always 100% conceptual. And what, what is this? Okay. What is this right here that stops us from the conceptual? I'll give you one more word here. I'm going to change the color on this one. It'll be a good one to end with here. Y'all see this? No. Move the board. Yeah. What does that say? E A D. A T A D. What does that say? What does that say? A head now. Head crash. <laughs> Y'all got it. Show head trash, aka your limiting beliefs, your stories. Your negativity, your doubts, your uncertainties, your struggles, and your troubles. And that's the difference between three types of salespeople. There is the non-performer. There is the core performer. And then there is, of course... The star performer. Which one are you? I'm the star performer. Okay, let's get honest. I'm the core performer. Let's get honest. I'm the non-performer. Thank you. Hmm. Just something to think about. One, two, four on performance. Five, two, seven, eight. Two ten. Awesome. So, any other things I can support you guys with today? What was a something you got out of today's class, Jeff? So, what did you get out uh, today. Just basically, um, and we all need it. Just a, a refresher, like an injection, like a refresher, like hey. Um, don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. You know, talk talk less. You know, listen more. For some of us, we don't even know how to. We don't even have a refresher to go back to. This is like brand new to them. Some of these guys on here have never even had a sales conversation. They they've never had that one on one conversation with somebody, and they know they need to. So yes, I agree, hundred percent. How about with you, Carlos? Well, uh, like uh, Jeff said, you know selling you know to sell but when people call me i talk to them about their business and i'm when they email me and i schedule a meeting i ask and i ask them about if they have a website or not and if they do by that time i already planned ahead and start looking at their websites and and their business and then i ask them questions and follow up with another question trying to dig deeper and deeper and deeper that's what I do. Uh, but before we skip, we schedule. But like I said, I I didn't think about uh, telling them this is gonna be this long or, or whatever, whatever, whatever. That's my takeaway, and I need to do that because think about this way. Okay, I learned this from one of my mentors many years ago. We train our sprock prospects how to uh treat us remember we train our prospects how to treat us if we allow them to break appointments they no big deal and shop us around and do all this then we're allowing them to do it this way right but if we're like right. hey look boom this is it and if you don't want to respect my time it's okay I'm done. Now we're going to build that star performer inside of us. It says, guess what? We can move past that because we 
are not allowing people to take over our expertise. We're giving them control, but we're also in control. We are equal. We are not greater than or we're not less than. We are equal to our prospect. Hey, Patrick. Um, iPhone had a good question. I think you can knock this one out. I kind of gave it a little bit. After you showed me, I gave it up to the to the group. But any tips, the iPhone's question was, any tips you can share on cold calling or prospecting? Okay. Uh, more specific. How to make a cold call yeah. or... Yeah, cold call uh, or prospecting. Now, iPhone, it, this exercise here, Patrick, I know has the answer, but can you give us a niche? That way he can be more specific to you and how to frame what he's about to give you. So if you can give me a niche and then be more specific, like Patrick says, if you can tell me more about what you mean. Contractors. Uh, okay. Contractors. Yeah. I, have a, I, have a, I have a question, guys. Do, do you, do you, I don't know about you guys, I never cold call. I don't need to. Well, right. But see, some guys may need to. Fair enough. And, and, and when it comes to cold calling, think of it this way, and this is a good one to bring up. We get a, you get a referral, you throw your system out the door because you assume that they want to work with you. So you don't find any of the emotion. You don't find any of the pain. You don't ask the questions. You don't, you just jump through and you get, and then all of a sudden you give them their stuff and they go away. Nobody has a hundred percent referral closing rate. I don't care who you are. Maybe if you're at the top of whatever, but it's very rare, right? So we get all, and here's the first thing to remember. I'm going to give you before you do anything. Two magic words. Uh, problem statement. Okay. I don't. I'm okay. So here we go. When we sell, we must remember these two magic words, friends. Emotionally detached. Let me reframe that again. I am emotionally detached when I am selling. I cannot care more about their problem and their pain than they can. And Carlos, that's probably one of the reasons why you're struggling right now. Because you get emotionally attached to caring about these people and they haven't paid you a dime. And now your motivation level drops down because you put in all this unpaid consulting, all this work to show how great you are, probably good stuff. And they don't respect it. So your motivation level to go talk to somebody else is the same thing. We need to learn how to become emotionally detached when we're working with prospects. I'm not saying being a jerk. But we cannot care more about their success than they can care about their own. So emotionally detached is number one when I'm cold calling. And when I get referrals. The biggest hook you'll get is somebody will say, hey, Patrick, you work really good with Alfredo. And you helped him grow from nothing to he makes 200000 a year and he does all these wonderful things and blah, 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 blah. I have one, my, one of my clients I've trained almost 20 years ago, eight-figure income guy. And he brought me one of his, one of his guys on the seems like, oh, yeah, you work with Ty. I'm ready to sign up. Blah, blah, blah. I go, hey, even though Ty is your, your senior vice president and blah, 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 just because I can work with Ty doesn't mean you and I can work with because I don't know you. I don't know you, Matt. And, and I might have to tell you, no, I'm not going to help you get to where you want to go, even though I've helped Ty get to where he wants to go. I may not be the type of coach you want to work with. And what's going to happen right there? He's like, what? Yeah. You know one of the reasons why Ty likes working with me, makes him a good coach? What? And he tells me, yeah, that's exactly right. I'm also really uncomfortable working. I, I call people out when they don't want to hear things. I'm not, I'm not the nicest coach to work at times. Oh, no, I want that. Right? I'm doing the opposite. With, I'm pulling them to me versus pushing them to me. Right? I, I want his business, but I don't need his business. Matt is now a vice president, CBRHRL is Denver. He's got two kids. He's got guys underneath him. Whatever. Okay? So, cold calling is a jackpot ex experiment. Write this down. 
This is how you're going to get successful at cold calling. Ready? Let me write it down for you. Write this down. Cold calling equals one word. What's the one word? Anybody? I don't want to put it in my thought process. It's so obvious. Cold calling equals one word. Persistence. No. Close. <laughs> cold calling equals one word. Pain. Close. Yeah. Pain. No, it's pain. <laughs> <laughs> one word. That's all it is. One word. Positivity. Sales. All right, I'm going to give it to you. Here it is. Cold call equals one word. I think I spelled it. P-R-A-C-T-I-C-E. -E. Practice. That's all it is. That's all it is. You ain't cold calling. You ain't practicing. You all got this shit down, don't you? No. So you go through every day. You put two hours a day cold calling. And get through your 30 cent commercial, get hung up on if you have to go through the process, <laughs> but you build the muscle for one hour a day or 30 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. And you cold call, you cold call pretty soon you get a conversation. Once you get a conversation, you get a connection. Once you get a connection, you set up an appointment. But the thing is, you don't even want to do the practice. You just want the magic dust. Here's the magic dust. Go do it. Woo I'm rich. Does not work that way. Cold calling equals practice. Practice your 30 cent commercial. So let's get to the practicing. Let's get it through. Here's a specific question I hope you can help me with. I plan on asking you to send a very brief video on outline strategy, like three minutes. Okay. All right. So would you take your 30 cent commercial and listen to you? How it's set up. I do a totally different workshop for this. I do a, a, a workshop. It's like talking about business owners. All right, these text messages. I'm. I need somebody to. If you want to help me with those, I'm afraid I, I'm trying to train and I have. It's hard right now. iPhone. Okay, I got, I got you. Yeah, I, go I, ahead I, and I work on training. the Coco. I'm double. Yeah, I <laughs> got you. <laughs> Doing my best to serve. So here it is. Number one. Number one. When it comes to cold calling. Be kind to yourself. Number two, don't okay. expect anything. Do not expect anything to come out of it. My largest client came from a cold call. The guy that I was telling you, he was already making almost a million a year. Now he makes eight figures a year, 20 years ago. All right? I'm emotionally detached. I don't expect anything out of it. I'm looking at it as a jackpot. If I hit it, great. If I don't, it's just my time to practice. What did I learn? Out of a sales, out of a sales call, there's five things. One, two, three, four, five. Number one, there's yes, I want to have a meeting with you. No, I don't want to have a meeting. Number three, a clear distinct future. You can tell me yes or no at that later time. What was the lesson learned? <laughs> what was the referral? That's it. That's all that comes out of a sales call, folks. Yeah, you are taking you too serious. So what do you measure when you're on a cold call? What's the first thing you should measure? What's the most important thing to measure? <clears throat> Anybody. How can you sales book a did? call? Can you get a conversations? How many conversations can you book a call? I'm give you something. I'm gonna give you something. The card. Okay. How many conversations? So what do you want to measure? How many conversations did I get with a person? Conversation is hello, they heard you, <laughs> you heard them. Okay. Out of the conversations, how many appointments? Did you set to talk further? You want to have a 30, 20, 15, 20 minute conversation? You want to set a, a longer appointment for 30 minutes or an hour? <laughs> Number three, how many referrals did you ask for or how many referrals did you receive? 
Well, Patrick, they don't even know me. You would be surprised on how many people will, they don't want to work with you. They still want to help you out. I got plenty of business from people I've never been in business with. All I say is, hey, guess what? Richard there thought that you and I should talk. He's over at ABC Company. He thought I should reach out and introduce myself. Is that okay, Jim? Sure, go right ahead. Boom. There it is. How many of you guys asking for referrals from people you have any done business with? No! Yeah! <laughs> Last one. Dials. How many dials did I make today? You got an aisle dial, it might be 500. With the cell phone, it might be 50. I don't know. And you just measure it, right? So you say, hey, my goal is to have one conversation today. I do that times five days. That equals five conversations in a week. I do that in a month. That is 20 conversations in one month. Do you think out of 20 conversations, you might get some damn business? You think out of the 20 conversations, if I set, uh, let's say, one a day, let's say if I just did one a week, one appointment, that's four appointments a week. I mean, <laughs> four appointments a month. How many referrals? Same thing. We don't like to be consistent. We like vague. We like the vague. How many conversations? How many appointments? How many referrals am I going to ask for or receive? Ask for is what you can do. You can't if you get them or not. How many dials am I going to make? And that becomes your numbers or you call your KPIs. No, you want to set, you want to find, okay, iPhone, I caught that one. If I find their pain, on that phone call, then I want to set a meeting up with them. And when I set up that meeting, I want them to be able to say, hey, listen, here's an idea. Why don't we schedule a 30-minute meeting, an hour meeting? And at that time, we can discuss if I can help you or not. If I'm not a good fit, I'm going to let you know up front. I want you to feel comfortable telling me no. Or I may have to tell you no as well. I don't work with everybody. Or it may make sense for us to work together. And we'll figure out what that looks like together. Is that okay? So in that meeting, uh, yeah, you're gonna have questions for me. Obviously, I'm gonna questions for you. That typically we'll figure out if it makes sense for us to move forward or not. Go ahead. <laughs> no, so Patrick, if we can like give them that script, and I want to respect your time and the other people that are here. I know you can go on forever about this and you're passionate, but I want to honor the 60 minute. Oh, well, huh? It's actually like <laughs> I, I just want to make sure I'm hungry. What's that? I'm tired. I'm hungry and I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll end with this, guys. I just want to get make sure that Patrick gets you this cold call conversation starter. So you kind of already preference there, right? You go in it uh, non-emotional, right? It just practice. That's all you're trying to get that those reps in. Those reps in. Now, I, I, that phone call is not to sell them, right? It's just to get that book appointment. Whether they get into it with you or they don't. It's, now, it's to get in, in that first call is to find a little bit of pain. It's to get them mm -hmm. curious about you. And then, and if you find a little bit of pain, they're going to, then they want to tell you more pain in a longer meeting. So it's like, Hey, yeah. then my problem is, Hey, so here's what you want to remember when they're telling you something, <laughs> tell me more, tell me more. And then the other one, it's, it's called the help me understand. The third one, explain that to me. That's it. Tell me more. Help me understand. Explain that more to me. And as they talk, hey, here's an idea. Let's set up a meeting. It's typically it's about 45 minutes an hour. And that meeting will get to know each other, see if it makes sense for us to work together or not. If we're not, tell me no. I don't want to waste your time or, nor mine. That's going for the no. Is that okay? And the last thing you see, it's called a post cell. Should I put that meeting in pen or pencil? Pen means we're going to meet doesn't mean it doesn't mean we're going to work together pencil means it shows up and you're not going to show up what should i do pen and then the last three magic words are you sure you want to meet with me yes i'm not going to get a cancellation or an email unless there's an emergency i can actually get prepared for a meeting i want to respect your time as well as i want my time to respect it does that make sense i make it sound easy i've been doing it for 20 some fucking freaking years guys <laughs> I caught that in the middle of there. Now, Patrick, uh, uh, can we just go through the beginning of that 
Uh, you know, so Patrick, um, it's Alfredo. Is this a good time to talk? Um, you know, I was doing some research and uh, I, I was wondering if I can introduce myself. Oh, you want myself. me to give you the pitch? All right, here, I'm going to give you a framework for a 30 cent commercial. Okay, watch the video. You're not going to get an email or template from me. I'm a one guy, I'm 50 some years old. I have a virtual assistant in Columbia, but I'm not going to send this to her. So this is, you watch the video, fast forward if you can. If not, good luck. All right, here it is. <clears throat> So wherever we're at the video, time is 7.16. Whatever time that is for you is when I'm going to do the 30-cent commercial for you guys. <laughs> if you want more in depth, I'll tell you. Okay, here it is. Ring, ring. Okay, I'm just going to role play with myself because that's the best role player you have. When you role play, role play with you first before you role play with other people. Because if you don't buy your stuff, nobody else is going to role play with you. Well, you need, no, you need you to get by yourself into this. Done. Here it is. <clears throat> ring, ring. Ha hello. Hey, Patrick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this is this is Patrick. I, I was doing a little bit. Well, uh, whatever. All right. I was doing a little research, and it just seemed to make sense for us to talk. I, I was wondering. Oh, let me start over. Cam. Okay. Contractor. Here we go. Contractor. Contractor. Got it. Here we go. Ring, ring. Hello. John? Yeah. <laughs> This is Patrick. Is this a bad time to speak? No. I was. This is Patrick. I was doing a little research. It just seemed to make sense for you and I to talk. I was wondering if I could take maybe 30, 45 seconds and briefly introduce myself. Is that okay? Pause. He's going to say yes. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much. I really, I really appreciate it, John. I'm with the ABC Marketing Company, and we do one thing. We help... Small small business owners that are contractors increase their lead count with more qualified leads in a short period of time. Typically, when I meet my clients, they fall in two types of categories. One, they're doing pretty good. However, they're always open-minded to see if there's a better return on investment what they're investing in marketing right now. Second type of clients sort of frustrated. They don't have somebody they can trust and things are getting worse. They're not getting the return on investment that they thought and they're wasting their time and their money. I'm curious, John, are you more like my first or second type of client? Second, wh why is that? I'm wondering. Would you mind telling me more? Sh should we keep talking? You think that gets That's conversations? It, <laughs> That's it. We can stop it right there. Hit replay. That will get the conversation started. That It's not coming through, uh, Jeff. There, now it is. Can barely read it. Where is it? But um, it was basically ask the right. Are you asking the right questions? Yeah, and and really the first part, right? It's a reason why Patrick was kind of stuttering, right? You kind of leaned in a little bit, but guys, that's it. How to start a conversation and everything after? Tell me more. Uh, help me understand that. Can you explain that to me? It's, uh, you know, back to what Patrick just first went over. You take him right through that on the second call or the third call. But no matter where they're at, and don't forget, come unemotionally attached, and it doesn't matter if they're a, a new a cold call, if they're a referral, if they're from your cold email, it. it doesn't matter. A networking partner doesn't matter. You got to send them matter. through the, that process. All right, I'm going to wrap up. Right. I just want to get one lesson every learn. What was the one thing you learned today, Jeff? Uh, basically, you don't know it all. I don't know it all. I agree 100%. <laughs> I, I have no... The less I know, the more I'm open to learn. <clears throat> Carlos, what did you learn today? Well, like I had mentioned before... Uh about creating a demo for them and stuff. I mean, I don't do that anymore. Charge them. Charge them a thousand bucks. <laughs> Good idea. Thank you. If you want my stuff, it's a thousand dollars. Richard, what did you learn? You're muted, sir. There I you like, go. Yeah, I liked um I liked how you brought up when um when we're doing cold calling or when you know to be kind to ourselves. Hundred yeah. percent. Because um, you know, I, I'm always seem to be my toughest critic. I'm I'm the All one that always beats myself up the most, you know. So yep. I need to be reminded of that time to time. So 
you're doing the best you can with the resources you have. And there's only one of everyone in the world. We're all children of God or some super creator. And we're doing a bit. We're risking ourselves. <clears throat> risking is what causes it all. Why we get paid the most is because we risk ourselves the most. We're, we're dealing with all those emotions. Perfect. M Mike McClellan from Arizona. What did you learn today, sir? To um, practice and practice as myself first. Yeah, record yourself. If you don't, if you ain't going to listen to you, why would they listen to you? Thank you for some honesty there iPhone person, thank you for all your participation today. What did you learn? You are muted. You're typing it out, person. I think. Okay. Don't, I get don't take calls too seriously. Alfredo, what did you learn today, sir? <laughs> Guys, I, I was just really excited to, you know, some of these techniques, like this script, you know, 30 minute conversation. I kind of went through it. Uh, I think it was last week and I wanted to bring Patrick in here today to kind of firsthand, you know, get it from, you know, the, the teacher himself. Right. So I, I was just excited to be able to share this with you guys. Those that have catch the replay. Um, I appreciate that. And my final thing is if you need help, I'll work with you. If money's an issue, whatever, it's money's great, but it's more, it's never about money. It's never about time. It's always about belief. So if you want my contact information, you can talk to Alfredo. If not, watch this video again and again, and um, I'll help you guys along the way. So, and if, yeah, so whatever. I've been doing this for just a little yeah. bit. Go ahead. Absolutely, guys. If you guys follow, um, let's show Patrick some love. Uh, if if you guys look at my Facebook, he's a part of my friends. Um, just have the way he spells his name, as you see on here. Look him up. You know, reach out to him. Like he said, he knows what he's doing. Uh, um, he can make it successful for you and your situation. Right? Everything is unique, and your he, he'll meet you where you are. And one hundred percent. That's what he's done for me. And those, some of my colleagues that, that we meet on Mondays. Um, so I appreciate everyone. I appreciate y'all. Uh, Alfredo, hit me up after the meeting. Yeah, absolutely, Richard. I'll hit you up. With that being said, Patrick, I appreciate you. Thank you much guys. love, much success to everyone. Next and I'll see you man. on the next hey guys. one. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Nice to meet you, everybody. Bye-bye. Likewise. All the best. Bye-bye, guys.